States resolution also opposes Israel's plans to attack the overcrowded city of Rafah. It says the assault would harm civilians and push them into neighboring countries. And it's not clear when or if the text will be put to a vote, but either way, it still intends to veto another measure calling for an immediate pause to the fighting. Well, let's get in recent days and weeks, a real shift in tone and language. And it looks as though the Biden administration is starting to run out of patience as Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, continues to defiantly um, oppose, ignore international calls for restraint in his military operation in Gaza, launched, of course, in uh, response to those October 7th attacks. Now, look, he's insisted that he has to go into Rafah, where he says there are still battalions of Hamas fighters. Just yesterday, the Israeli government said that if Hamas doesn't return all Israeli hostages within the next three weeks, it will go ahead with that offensive. And that seems to have really prompted a bit of a flurry of international efforts to try to get Israel to rethink its strategy, try to... ...and Saudi Arabia are among the countries to address it. Yesterday, the UN's top court heard from the Palestinian delegation. Israel has declined to take part. So let's speak to our correspondent. Well, there were some emotional testimonies yesterday. We heard from uh, the Palestinian Authority's representative to the UN. His voice was breaking as he asked the judges here, what does international justice mean to the children of Gaza today? It hasn't protected their lives or limbs, their hopes or homes. We also heard from the uh, international lawyer, Philippe Sands, who said the great hall inside the Peace Palace, home to the International Court of Justice, was not starry-eyed about the potential for international justice. And yet he said, this is all we have. And he told me after the hearing that he believes an advisory opinion from this court, the UN's highest court, could help to set the parameters for a negotiated settlement in the future. And Anna, given that Israel has rejected the court's jurisdiction on the matter, what can... Right. Um, Israel has rejected this court's jurisdiction over its occupation of the West Bank, and yet it has submitted a five-page document in which it says it believes this case is harmful to efforts to achieve a peaceful resolution uh, because the question posed by the UN Gen General Assembly is actually prejudice. However, over the next five days, six days in total, a record 51 countries taking part. We'll start to get some insight into how different countries' positions may be shifting in line with or in response to what's happening in Gaza, in Rafa today. And then it will probably take about six months for this court to issue its advisory opinion. These advisory opinions are not legally binding but they do carry a huge amount of political weight, so could indeed have some influence over the future trajectory of this conflict.